So that finally brings us to the topic of materiality. Now, materiality as a concept has been around for a long time, starting over 100 years ago in accounting and financial reporting. The basic concept is that companies need to report on information that's significant and would be relevant to stakeholders who are using their reports to make decisions. And so it provides a way for companies to filter in and filter out data uh, when doing reporting. And because it's been around for so long, there's established guidance on what constitutes financial materiality. This includes things like reporting standards, um, regulations, guidelines, and also contextual factors like the size of a company, the industry it's in, the, the global environment that it's operating in. So materiality as a basic concept is well understood as a way to decide what does and doesn't need to be included in reporting. So now let's take this and apply it to ESG. When we consider materiality in ESG, the same principles apply. It's used to decide what you should focus on and what you need to report on. So for example, financial materiality is used to filter in and filter out the ESG issues that could impact an organization's financial performance. It's sometimes called outside-in materiality. In other words, how can the outside world impact an organization in a meaningful way? And we see this reflected in the TCFD guidelines, which were designed to lower risk in the financial system by having companies identify and report on uh, the material climate change risks that they face. Um, it's also affected in SASB, which gives industry-specific guidelines for companies when reporting on ESG topics that would impact their financial condition or their operating performance. Now, double materiality, on the other hand, broadens the concept of materiality to identify how a company's activities would impact external stakeholders. Um, it retains the concept of outside-in materiality or financial materiality, while including an assessment of inside-out materiality. This inside-out view is often referred to as impact materiality. Concept of impact materiality you know, is reflected in the GRI standards, which focus on impact reporting independently of financial reporting. And finally, we see the two sides of double materiality really formalized in the EU's uh, sustainability reporting standards, you know, which, which expressly require double materiality assessment as a basis for reporting. From an application perspective, organizations will typically consider a broad range of ESG topics, so they'll build a larger list, likely drawn from a review of the standards like ESRS. And then they'll conduct a double materiality assessment to determine which ESG topic areas are material and most important to their company. And typically they'll plot this into a graph that's called a materiality matrix. This is a graph that plots ESG topics along two dimensions, usually um, importance to the enterprise or perhaps financial materiality and importance to external stakeholders or impact materiality. In this example, an organization may conclude that greenhouse gas emissions is a key priority as it has a high materiality score from both a financial and an impact perspective. Now, for those of you that are focused on ESRS, it's important to note that you know, you're expected to report on a topic if it's material from either dimension. So it doesn't have to be both for it to be material. Now, once these topics are identified through materiality assessment, the organization would set out to track and gather the information they require for reporting like metrics, opportunities, and more.